continuing with the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verse 15 and following. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. Let us pray. God of light and love on this most holy of nights, we gather to hear the familiar story. And we pray that in all that we share tonight, you would sing a melody of love to each heart. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I shared a story a few weeks ago about being in a grocery store lineup and there was a, a little girl about three in a, in a shopping cart in front of me and she was trying to get her mother's attention her mother was deep in conversation with someone else, and so the little girl began saying, Mama, 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 and after about 15 mamas, her mother finally turned to her, and the little girl said, I love you, Mama, a message that no mother would want to miss. And this little girl knew that repeating a word or a phrase is a good way to get someone's attention, just keep at it, keep repeating until the person hears. Advertisers, educators, coaches, parents, and toddlers all use the power of repetition to capture attention or to get a message to, uh, to who they want to speak. And the scripture story does this too. Do you know what the most repeated scriptural phrase is? It's found in both the Old and New Testaments. The phrase is repeated 350 times. It's, do not be afraid, or fear not, do not be afraid. We must be fearful people, enough so that we need to hear these reassuring words repeated 350 times. In the familiar story that we shared on this night, it says, In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. Fear was the topic of the very first Christmas Eve sermon preached by an angel over a field outside Bethlehem to a tiny congregation of shepherds blinking into now radiant skies. Do not be afraid, the angel says. In the Christmas story, as we read it in Luke, the words do not be afraid are repeated. Elizabeth and Zechariah are going to have a son in their old age. They will have a son, John the Baptist. And in the first chapter of Luke, the priest Zechariah is in the temple, and in an incense flame, an angel appears and begins by saying, Do not be afraid. And then, as the story continues, Mary, a teenage girl from Nazareth, is told she will have a son, that she will be the mother of the Son of God, and the message to her begins with these words, do not be afraid. And then shepherds watch their flocks in Bethlehem fields and 
are told, do not be afraid before good news is shared and angels' songs are sung. If an angel appeared to you, you might be afraid. We imagine angels as winged infants or picture them as children dressed in white gowns adorned in golden tinsel. But I expect that the archangel Gabriel was more imposing than that. The high angels called seraphim in the book of Revelation have six wings, and all those wings are covered in eyes. Who knows what an archangel looks like? An angelic visitor speaks, do not be afraid. The author Frederick Buechner suggests that the angel Gabriel says these words, don't be afraid, in part to himself, seeing how God's plan of salvation rests in the courage of a teenage girl, or how our salvation comes in such a tiny, fragile package, a tiny infant lying in a manger. Even before the angelic appearance, those in the story we share from Luke might have reason to be afraid. Joseph and Mary, Mary fully pregnant, are uprooted by an imperial order, forced by an oppressive regime to travel dangerous roads to a far town where there is no room for them. Mary enters labor in a cold and dark place, far from the support of family. Shepherds toil in the darkness on the edge of town, poor and lonely and vulnerable. In this familiar story from Luke, there is oppression, rejection, risk, vulnerability. It's into this trembling world that the angel comes and says, fear not. Do not be afraid, for I bring you good no news of a great joy for all people. So on this particular Christmas, maybe we're a little afraid, anxious a bit, fearful just a little. It's a strange time, our second COVID Christmas. Omicron imposes itself on us. A great viral wave threatens. Two of the things that trigger fear in human beings are the threat of loss and the presence of uncertainty. COVID threatens loss. We might lose our health or lose beloved traditions or anticipated joys or cherished connections. COVID brings uncertainty. Plans are hard to reliably make. Many have had to be undone. We are quite uncertain about the future. Into this world, this Christmas, the Christmas story speaks. Repeating the divine message, the phrase shared 350 times in the scripture story, the words spoken by fearsome angels, the divine messengers of God, who say first before they say anything else, do not be afraid. The baby born in Bethlehem grows to be the man who tells his friends in a dark time, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. And this Jesus inspired the words of a young woman from the town of Avila in Spain, Teresa of Avila, who wrote in a time of darkness, of loneliness, after being thrown out of her community. She wrote in her diary words that many people still pray. Let nothing trouble you. Let nothing frighten you. Those who know God have everything. Only God is enough. Here again, the angelic words, do not be afraid. Christ is born in Bethlehem. God comes as a baby into a fearful world. 
Jesus is born right into our uncertainty, our anxiousness, so we can know that God is right in the middle of it all with us. God understands. God is filled with compassion. The angel says, do not be afraid. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, glory to God in highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom God's favor rests. Those words bear repeating. Fear not, Christ is born. Merry Christmas. Amen.